asked me to speak about why I do what I do at St. John's. And uh, we'll keep it relatively short. Um, well, hey, it's a long-term habit to go to church. Um, I admit there are a few years I didn't, but um, when I was a young child, and my dad was in the Navy, we traveled all over the world. And the first thing we did whenever we got to the new place was go to church. And we knew all the songs, we knew what to do, we knew what the book said, we knew we were immediately comfortable in our new surroundings, and we found our people right away. So that's been a long-term habit of mine. I didn't really realize it until I moved into this neighborhood. And I said one day, it's on Sunday, I'm going to church, and I walked over here. I called my grandmother and said, baby, I'm going to go to church up the street. She goes, oh, St. John's? That's the church that Uncle so-and-so built for Auntie Emily. And I'm like, oh, come on, everything is not about our family. It happens that they were involved. Um, <laughs> and the first, that used the first vestry and gave some, you know, stone and some land and some stuff, but, um, and uh, so that made me feel even more at home here. And so right away I really wanted to do things here, like I wanted to be part of everything. Um, singing was my first one that I joined. I love to sing and it's really great to have a place where my voice, which is, you know, it's okay, but not great, but it's welcome here and always feels good. And I love singing is, I take the songs I sing here, with me all everywhere. So it's very, it's just a great practice for me. Uh, I also need to think and talk about my faith um, in a way that's kind of different than a lot of places. Having a sermon group here and having not only a response, not only the opportunity to talk about faith, or sometimes it's a very passive thing in some churches where someone else tells you what to think. And, with, and it explains everything to you, and you just sit there and go, okay, get great. Here, it's a much different experience. It's really an active, searching um, exploration of what our faith is, and uh, you know, evidence what happened today with with Kim. The, the sermon group that preceded this was very dynamic. There was just a lot of ideas, like really going around, um, and with big energy. So wonderful. Um, and that, the final thing is I get a chance for my contributions to mean something, like in a community that needs me. So that's a big feeling in this world, right? We all can feel pretty helpless about, like, does our little vote count? Does our little contribution here count? Does our little can of food count? Does our, you know, but the work that we do here in this place to keep it together, all together, is a really significant thing. And, um, Feeling needed is a really important feeling in the world. And so I get all of those things, and that's why I do it. <laughs> Good morning. Almost everyone in here knows me, but I'm Reese Cullen. And uh, Michael asked me to say a few uh, words about why I do what I do at St. John's. Um, also, I have a little uh, laryngitis, but bear with me. We're going to get through this. Um, uh, and I thought I might uh, dispute the premise that I do anything in St. John's, but um, let's, uh, we'll give it a crack. Um, uh, some of the things I do at St. John's are open the church on Sunday mornings, um, and sometimes I'm the usher. And I do those things um, because I think it's important um, that our church be open to all who wish to come through the door. And sometimes people need to come through the door. Sometimes people just need a place to be, and St. John's, I hope, can be an option for them. Um, so I love opening church. Um, it's a way that I can uh, reciprocate the welcome that I received when I first came in here 10 years ago. I love to tell my St. John's origin story. Uh, most of you have heard it before. Um, I was alone 10 years ago. Uh, Becky had moved down to Baltimore, Maryland for a job. Um, and the two of us had recently left Memorial Church at Harvard, so I was without a community on Sunday mornings. Um, and I came here uh, following uh, Mark Eddington, whom I had first met at Harvard. And uh, I found this community and was welcomed with open hearts and what I can only describe as magnanimity, great souledness. Um, 
the second or the third week that I was here at the Peace, um, still not knowing anyone besides Mark, I came down the aisle and two people in this congregation said to me, I don't remember your name, but I recognize you. Um, you are welcome here. Um, and I was uh, just um, floored. And uh, I have loved being a part of this community ever since. So that's why I continue to do the things that I do here. Um, I'm a regular uh, participant in the 8 o'clock service. I do that for the thin places, um, for spiritual refreshment, water in a dry place. Um, I love the intimacy of the 8 o'clock service. I love the quiet. Um, and uh, I love seeing many of you intermittently at the 8 o'clock service. It's always here. It's always open. And uh, we love having you when you choose to come to the 8 o'clock. Finally, with regard to mutual ministry in general, things like sermon group and fellowship group, these are the ways that we uh, live our faith into the world. Uh, they are the ways that we love one another as we are commanded to do, and then the ways that we love um, our neighbors as ourselves, um, we share our gifts, our charisms uh, with the many members of one body of Christ. And um, I consider it a great uh, privilege and a joy to participate in that with the rest of you. Um, the last thing I'll say is church, I believe strongly, this church. Church is the place where no matter what you give, you get more back. Um, and that's why I do what I do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patty Sheck, and Michael asked me to speak to you about what stewardship means to me. I'm a cradle Episcopalian, and my family has been at St. John's for nearly 40 years. In 1984, we moved to Wallapan from Georgia for my job, with no family or friends in the area. We looked at several churches, and it was the music, no surprise, that drew us to St. John's. Also, the rector at the time visited us in our home. That made a big impression. I joined the choir, and our sons joined the Sunday school. Actually, they, along with one other little girl, were the Sunday school. <laughs> Since we had no actual family close by, over the years, the members of the church, all of you, became our family. Steve, my late husband, who most of you know, and I could not contribute much in treasure, but we gave of our time and talent over the years. I don't think there is any position or group in the church that either he or I have not been part of. All our children served various roles in the church. They continue to be involved in the churches where they know the will in North Carolina. Rob is rector of an Anglican church in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Alec, right here at St. John's. In a small church such as ours, mutual ministry is vital. Clergy and lay must share responsibilities. The treasure, treasure aspect of stewardship is certainly important, but it's the time and talent of the laity that allows the church to function. We have so many opportunities to offer ourselves and our gifts. Choir, sermon group, altar guild, now resuming fellowship groups, anti-racism group, vestry, the list goes on. So during this stewardship season, I invite you to make a commitment to one new facet of our mutual ministry. Where might you choose to offer your time and talent? Thank you. Why did I come here? The short answer is mutual ministry. And the idea behind that is not just we all do stuff around here. You all have a very, very clear and specific way of doing mutual ministry that is absolutely beautiful because it is rooted in community. Everything we do here, we do together. I know I got the long robes and all that, and that the, these are symbols of the ministry to which I've been ordained, but what we are about to do up there, we are all doing together. And it's, yes, we do need folks to open the door and to lead services and to preach, but it's really about the folks here are engaged with their faith, with their theology, not afraid to ask questions, not afraid to wonder, and just journey together in this, this life and growing 
growing in our faith, in our trying to just be good people. When folks are called, and sometimes I make those calls that say, would you? They answer. More often than not, the answer is yes, which I appreciate. But no's are okay too, because folks will say, well, I can't do that, but is there something else that I can do? People around here are always willing to volunteer and jump in and do whatever needs to be done. Um, what else do I have here? I mean, you guys take the call to preach and give us a good word about widows and Naomi and Ruth and want to know more about who this guy St. John is. You'll hear from Brian next Sunday about that. Um, Lemming set the table. I will, I have, have and probably will still throw some random things at you sometimes and people roll with it and they sort of roll up their sleeves and get on with it. I'm also keenly aware that while you all are very attentive to my burnout, I am attentive to yours. You do a lot around here and there's burn burnout. I, I get that and I hear that. So one initial step is next Sunday, I am providing to you a celebration for St. John's Day. Got some catering for you. It's my way of saying thank you and a little bit of refreshment and rest. So let me take care of you for next Sunday. How about that? And with that, we are going to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us in offering and sacrifice to God.